Thank you all so much for being here. I'm Wim Bell, the president of Portland State University for another uh, 39 days, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of time, you may remember that it was only exactly four weeks ago that the, I had the pleasure of standing here and announcing a wonderful gift for the renovation of Neuberger Hall and the creation of an art museum. What I did not mention at that time was that gift was actually the result of a challenge that was inspired by another very special gift, which we're here to celebrate today. As you know, Neuberger Hall sits at the very heart of the campus. We like to call it the university's front door. We also know it's not a very pretty front door. But it's very important. It's home to eight academic departments, 36 classrooms, computer labs, and it houses all kinds of essential student services like the registrar's office, financial aid, ID services, and so on. But this building is more than 50 years old and a bit of a windowless bunker. In fact, when I first came to Portland State and I was given a tour of the building, I visited some of the people working at the lower levels and I described their work environment as Dickensian squalor. <laughs> I'm so pleased that at the end of my term, we'll be able to work to get rid of that squalor. The deferred maintenance and the updating of this building uh, is a $70 million project. And the state legislature in its previous session, not the one that's just uh, finishing up now, uh, really accepted how integral this building is to Portland State and how important Portland State is to serving this region. So they committed $60 million in state bonds to the renovation on the condition that we raise the remaining $10 million. Today, I'm thrilled to announce that PSU alumnus Dr. Farbors Massey has committed $5 million in philanthropic support for the renovation of Neuberger Hall, completing our $10 million match. <laughs> With this gift, Dr. Farbors Massey has become PSU's most generous donor with almost $18 million in contributions. And by the way, I want you to know that Farabors more than once has told me that he would love to hand that title of the most generous donor to somebody else. <laughs> Farabors Messi has a relationship with Portland State that spans four decades as a student, alumnus, and a great advocate. He has supported scholarships, fellowships, endowed professorships, and other funds and awards. His transformational gifts originally resulted in the creation of the Massey College of Engineering and Computer Science and the Farbors Massey Department of Mathematics and Statistics. And he's also made gifts to our College of the Arts. More than that, he's been an advocate, a friend, a supporter that I've been able to count on for advice and support at all times Please, I invite him now to come up here and to talk about this wonderful gift. Farbors. Good morning. Good morning. Let me get my knowledge out so I can speak. Today, I am pleased, grateful, and very excited to have the opportunity to make an addition of philanthropic investment at Portland State University. The main purpose of this gift is to accomplish two objectives. Objective one, to fund the renovation of Neuberger Hall, a functionally important building at PSU where many of the student administrative affairs and eight different departments reside, including my alma mater, Department of Mathematics and Statistics. Objective two, to empower a vision to expand PSU's research and academic portfolio in areas of large data sciences, biosciences, 
bioengineering, and business analytics. Through these specific but also broad objectives, it is our hope that PSU can transform itself into a frontiering university. Data and informatics together with health sciences may be the drivers of the next decades as human quest to innovate, learn, and live longer will continue. PSU should play a role in these important areas now and in the future and be the supplier of the intellectual workforce for Portland and beyond. PSU's location at the heart of the largest metropolitan center in Oregon and in close proximity to Oregon Health Sciences University, another Oregon gem, is helpful for such vision. Again, I am honored to have the opportunity to help in this vision and happy to answer questions at the end of today's presentations. Let me close by acknowledging what Wim Vivel has done for the university. Not only by erecting buildings and leading organization to a much better academic standing, but also for his sense of civic duty and civil responsibility. Recently, I get these Google alerts with my name in articles about Vim and other Oregon universities protesting against the so-called travel ban and how it may affect talent recruitment at Portland State. Vim, I am very proud of you for your bold stand and leadership in this matter. History has shown over and over that categoric discrimination has never worked in the past, whether it was levied against Irish, Italians, Chinese, Japanese, Jews, blacks, gays, lesbians, and now against Mexicans and Muslims. This has always been the land of liberty and freedom. Instead of pressuring the oppressed population, in my opinion, we need to double down our effort to go and find those bright talents who may have very few options now before others find them. It is better we have them than others. I stand before you today because a slot was open for me at a critical time. We need to keep those slots open. I hope this body will continue to fearlessly let the knowledge serve the city and also the society beyond. President Shureshi, I welcome you and stand to help in any ways that I can. Keep those slots open. Thank you. Obviously, very important messages. Thank you so much, Farah Boris. At this point, I'd like to introduce the dean of our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, Karen Marangel, whose college is the main occupant of Newberger Hall and who will be very involved with making sure the aspirations that this gift reflects are indeed accomplished. Karen, please join me up here. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here today. In addition to being the Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, I'm also a professor of mathematics and statistics here at Portland State University. I want to begin by saying thank you so much, Dr. Massey, for your continued generosity to Portland State and your confidence in our students, faculty, and programs. It has, your gifts to date have truly been transformational for us. This building, Newberger Hall, is the heart of the university. Most students at Portland State pass through its doors at some point. For my college, it houses three of our largest departments, English, World Languages and Literatures, and the Farabores-Massey Department of Mathematics and Statistics. 
Our students deserve a world-class learning environment, and Dr. Massey, your gift enables us to provide such an environment to them. Your previous gift to the Department of Mathematics and Statistics transformed what we are able to do in our graduate and undergraduate programs. The infusion of three new faculty joining our already strong faculty in computational mathematics led to the creation of the Portland Institute for Computational Science, whose aim is to promote effective use of computational technologies to solve the 21st century scientific problems. The Institute has already garnered major awards from the National Science Foundation and the Army Research Office. Our graduates are highly sought after and our programs continue to attract national attention. This is in part to your gift and your vision. I'm also honored that we both share Dr. Jean Enneking, former chair of the Department of Mathematics and Statistics as a mentor and pivotal figure in our lives. Dr. Enneking's legacy one of believing in and supporting students and faculty will be carried on through your generous gift. Dr. Missy, thank you again for all of your support for Portland State University and everything you do for our students, faculty, and programs. Thank you. Thank you, Karen, and thank you for your leadership. And it's because of the trust and faith we and Dr. Missy have in you that this gift became possible, so thank you very much. Two more things before we conclude. First of all, I want to share a message from someone who was unable to attend today, but who understands the significant impact of this gift in transforming not only our campus, but its impact on the future of Portland and the state. This is a letter from Governor Kate Brown, who is just a little busy still doing other things. <laughs> Dear Dr. Massey, Thank you so much for your generous support of the Newberger Hall renovation and for rounding out the private fundraising match to release the $60 million in state bonds. Your incredible gift will shape the student experience at Portland State University today, tomorrow, and for generations to come. This gift marks you as the most generous individual donor in Portland State University's history. Your contributions to engineering, mathematics, and statistics scholarships, professorships, programmatic development, and student-centered activities are sincerely appreciated. I'm honored by your generosity to our students, our community, and our state. Sincerely, Kate Brown, Governor. Now, just to wrap up, as you know, I'll be stepping down in uh, about a month. And while I've had the pleasure of announcing this transformational gift in the one last month, it is our new president who will ultimately be in charge of making sure that we fully utilize them to the best possible. So I'm so pleased that we have Dr. Ramat Shureshi with us here today. Ramat, would you please stand? Um, he's going to be our leader. And I know we'll do a great job for the university taking it ever forward. Thank you so much for being here. And please, Dr. Marcy, would you join me back up here on the podium for any questions that anybody from the media or in the audience uh, may have. How many, um, how many current students at PSU or prospective students at PSU are affected by the travel ban? By the travel ban? Oh. Um, uh, the, well, perspective is always hard to know. We have about 70 students from the six affected countries. As you know, those people who have a direct relationship uh, will not be affected by it, so it will not have an immediate impact on them. The reason why we are so concerned about it is that it sends both a negative message to students who might want to come from those countries, but more broadly, it just sends a negative message about the extent to which this country is welcoming to people to come from abroad. Because there's this travel ban now, who knows? If you are abroad, you might worry next month it might be something else. And somebody who might now be allowed in might not be anymore. So it is just that, that larger symbolic message that a travel ban sends that we are very, very concerned about. Thank you for the question. Other questions? Yes, please. Do 
dear donor, for the benefit of all of us, would you give us a, your resume, how you got to where you are? <laughs> how long do you have? <laughs> Ken's been a great supporter of uh, the university and the uh, engineering college. So, Farboys, please do, do brag a little bit. <laughs> so, 17 year old, um, I decided that where I was staying at the time, Tehran, Iran, uh, was a little bit too chaotic for me. I needed to get out. Uh, and Portland State at the time, and this is dating all of us, uh, they telexed me uh, an admission. <laughs> uh, fax was not available at that time. So uh, that's why I ended up in Portland State because it was the fastest admission that I received. And at that time, there was a US embassy actually in Iran, and you know, I went and got processed. I went through the engineering school here, uh, and then I went um, for a couple months to Oregon State um, for graduate school. Uh, it's tough to live in that metropolitan area. <laughs> so I left to University of Texas at Austin, uh, got a master's degree. I came back here to help my family. Meanwhile, I got another master's degree here in the mathematics. And then uh, once my family got stabilized, I went to uh, Boston to do a doctoral degree at MIT. After that, I started a company, ran it for about nine years, sold it at the previous stock market bubble of year 2000. Um, and then um, I um, uh, left my company. After a couple of years, I moved to California and uh, started an investment firm, and that's what I do. Uh, is that short enough? <laughs> Any other questions? If not, I want to thank all of you for being here and helping us celebrate. Uh, Dr. Massey will be available for the press for any further questions or, or interviews, and let's all remember that this is a great moment of celebration, but in many ways, you know, the work has just begun, and it will take the collective effort of everybody here to realize the promise and the dream that gifts like this imply. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you.